A nice thing there would have been, well, you're a nice teacher, Mr. Myers. But I get it. No problem. I'm cool. I don't need validation. Um, yeah, so greatest common factor. Uh, you all know what the actual definition of a greatest common factor is. You know what it is. Um, and if you look back on your uh, uh, page right before... I remind you of how to do it, but before, uh, you don't need to look back on your page before because I'm going to do this uh, anyway. The first thing you need to remember about greatest common factor, and guys, I am not lying about this, okay? Always look for a GCF. Even if you're not doing a unit in math class on factoring, even if you're in physics class and you're faced with an, uh, an equation, which it will happen, or you're in higher level math classes and you're not doing specifically factoring, you always want to look for a greatest common factor because it makes the expressions you're dealing with simpler, okay? Always look for a GCF. It's always the first thing to try, but don't fall into the trap of thinking, <laughs> I factored the crap out of that polynomial. I'm done. Don't fall into that trap because the next warning is you may. Nice. You may need to factor further. Okay. So don't fall into that trap. Okay. You know what would be funny, Josh? We should get, I should get an umbrella. So whoever, and I should like, like a beach umbrella. And I should duct tape it to that, one, to one of those desks. So when you sit down there, so when they come in, they can be like, what the hell's with the beach umbrella? Would you guys sit under an umbrella? Yeah. I'll do it. I'll bring in my beach umbrella. Should I bring in the one that looks like the beach or the one that is a Canada flag? Because as you well know, I spend a lot of time at the beach and only a fool is ready to go to the beach without a beach umbrella. Okay, I'll see if I can find it. It's winter, it's hard to find that stuff. But I think it's sitting in my garage behind my surfboards. Yeah, that's where it is. Mm. I think Catherine might have taken it out though to go to a girl guide selling Girl Guy cookie selling. Oh, by the way, my daughter's selling Girl Guy cookies. What kind? What kind you want? The mint ones. The only good ones. If you guys want some Girl Guy cookies, you let me know. I hook you up. Okay, first one's free. You see me for more. I'm just kidding. First one's not free. First one's five bucks for the box. So is the second one. But they are delicious, and you'll help my daughter go to camp for a whole week in the summer. Because as you all know, I want my daughter to grow up to be a strong woman, as I want all of you to grow up to be strong women. The problem with, well, not you, Mark. I don't want you to grow up to be a strong woman. Don't be that way. I'm talking to the girls right now. I'm just talking about girl guy cookies. Come on, Mark. <laughs> anyway, the only problem with, of course, wanting you all to grow up as strong women is we have to live with you now. You get that joke? Yeah. It's a parent joke, yeah. right? I want you to grow up to be a strong woman, Beth. Okay, Dad, go to bed. Why? <laughs> yes. It will serve her well later, but at 10? <sighs> Anyways, uh, so we remember a couple of facts about uh, greatest common factor. One, it is the reverse of distribution. Now, what math is distribution? There's only four maths. What's math is distribution? Multiply. So that must mean that greatest common factor is the reverse of multiplying. So it is division. And we remember we follow the simple pattern of 1, or A, divide by the GCF, and B, rewrite 
GCF bracket quotient one plus or minus quotient two and so on. Okay? Everybody cool? Now we'll start with a really easy one. You look at this, this is a binomial. We can make that binomial simpler by following these simple steps. First, we have to decide on the GCF. Now, remember, GCF is the biggest number that goes into both all terms you have. Now, this one is easy to see because you have five and five. It's only got two factors, it's a prime number, one and five. What's the biggest number that goes into five and five? Five. There's an X there, there's no X there. So in this case, my GCF equals five. So I've decided that in my head. So now I divide everything by the GCF and then I rewrite. GCF outside, quotient one. What is five X divided by five? X, because the fives cancel, plus. Now here's where kids screw up. For some reason, you have been taught your whole lives to cancel, and you think that makes things disappear. It doesn't. Canceling means it equals one. Are you all aware of that? And the reason it looks like it disappears is because usually when you're canceling, you're canceling in the middle of a big term, a big set of terms, and you have like x, y, z over x, and you cancel that, and everyone's like, okay, it's gone. It's not. It becomes one y, z, but we don't write the one. That's what's really happening. So this has to become one. Now, how do you check and make sure you've done it right? You distribute. 5x, 5 times 1 is 5, 5x plus 5, it works, okay? That's the step that people don't take. They do a whole bunch of factoring work, they write out an answer, half a page, and it takes them 10 minutes to factor one expression, and then at the very end, instead of taking five seconds to distribute it, they hand it in to me, and it's done wrong. Now, in grade 10, that's no big deal, right? Because if the question's out of three and you've done half of the factoring right, you're going to get one and a half out of three, aren't you? But in physics 11, physics 12, chemistry, math 11, math 12, calculus, wherever you go from here, if you screw up the factoring, then everything's wrong it would be like screwing up the addition because it's something that you need to do right away. It's like a first step. It would be, it's like forgetting to carry if you were adding in grade three. Picking up what I'm putting down? So do that check. It's worth your time. So what's the common factor here? Three. So I divide everything by three. And then I rewrite GCF, 6x divided by 3 is 2x, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then I check, 3 times 2 is 6x, 3 times 1 is 3, and I'm in business. Is everybody good? Okay, look at the next one. Uh-oh, looks different. It's a trinomial all of a sudden. But we're still going to check. What is it? 3 again. So I'm going to divide everything by 3, and I'm going to rewrite it as 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. Everybody cool? Now, please highlight that. Don't turn your page, but look back to the last page that we didn't do. See that? That is factorable. All right, I haven't taught you how yet. Don't worry about it. So when you see something that looks like that, this should be a warning for, not FOP, that's not the word I want there, F 
four possible further factoring. Now, in this case, it doesn't factor anymore. But the point I'm trying to make, the reason I put this question here is because I need you guys to see something that looks like it might, so you think to try more. Do you understand what I'm saying? That being said, it is just as important to realize when it can't be factored. And since I haven't taught you this yet, you don't need to worry about it. I just want you to be aware that sometimes you'll do something but need to go further. Cool? All right. Now, the last one is slightly different. Why? Because now we got to look at the variables too, don't we? What's the biggest number that works with two and six? Four and six. Two. So you know you're going to need to divide by two. Now, let's say you don't notice that X. You with me? So you would say, oh, it's two, Myers, I got you. Two, two X squared plus three X. Now you should look at that and say, wait a minute. X and X, that's something that's common to both of them, yeah? So I'm going to divide again by X, which brings the X out to the front, and I get two X plus three. Does everybody see that? Okay. Now, the concern here is what did I have to remember when doing that division? Pardon me? Why? Yeah, because we need our exponent laws still. Does everyone see that? Okay. Um, I don't want you to necessarily write this down. I just want to show you what I mean. Um, 12... And 16, what's the GCF? Four. Everybody cool? Okay. So the GCF is four. Oh, I wanted to change that to red. GCF is four. Everybody agree? Okay. X, X. Now what's the GCF? Four X. Everybody cool? X cubed y squared, or x squared. What's the GCF now? Where? It's now 4x squared, isn't it? Because this guy has an x squared to give to the party. Everybody cool? Okay. 4x cubed y to the fifth, y to the third. Now what's the GCF? Three what? Y cubed, because this guy can give three. Everybody understand? Everybody good? Now if I make this a binomial, how would I factor that? I take out the GCF, which you guys all agreed was 4x squared y cubed, and I divide that by 4x squared y cubed. So what's 12 divided by 4? 3. x cubed divided by x squared? x. y to the fifth divided by y cubed? y squared. Plus? 16 divided by 4, 4, and then cancel, cancel. Does everybody see how to do it? I didn't want you to write this down because I wanted your undivided attention at what I was actually doing. Because all we did there is what we did over here. I just reminded you of the exponent laws. Is everyone okay? All right, now listen, this is going to be a little bit of a weird day because of the way factoring works. I want you to do these four right now, okay? Then I want you to do, if you look on your outline, you see worksheet 4.3. That for you guys 
is page 110 and 111 down to the next thing. So it's one, two, three, four, and then you stop when you get to factoring polynomials. Okay? So do these four right now. Talk to your neighbor if you need to. It'll take like two seconds. I'll show you the right answers. Then you go on to the next page, which is 110 and the top of 111. Everyone okay? All right. So take a second. Work through these. Remember, this is what you do. You get a GCF and quotient 1 plus or minus quotient 2 and so on. Okay? So step 1 is find the GCF. Remember, GCF looks at numbers and variables. So who would like to tell me what to do with the first one? I'll give you a moment to check it over. Of course, a great many have already moved on past the first one, but... Would anybody like to talk to me? Five is the right number. Absolutely right, Sammy. Do any of the letters work? There's an X everywhere, right? How many X's everywhere? That guy has two, that guy has two, but that guy only has one. So what's the most amount of X's I can get out of any of all the terms? One X. Can I take a Y out of everything? No, because this guy's only got an X. So now we, we I, this is a very hard word for me to say with my Elmer Fudd-like mouth. We rewrite 5X as a GCF and then all my quotients. Now remember, when you're doing quotients, you have to divide the numbers and the letters separately. 25 divided by 5 is 5. X over X, what happens? They cancel out, and I'm left with a Y there. Yeah? Plus, 15 divided by 5 is 3. X squared divided by X is X. Minus, 30 divided by 5 is 6. X squared divided by X is X. And Y squared. Is everybody cool? Now listen to me. Remember how a few days ago I talked to you about how we write out polynomials and degrees of polynomials and all that crap? And our good friend Mr. Price at the back of the room said nobody really cares even at university? This is a perfect example of that. If you leave this like this, you're still getting the full marks. Technically though, we would write this differently, right? Technically, we would start with the x by itself, then the xy squared, then the y. But some people would say we should start with the y squared because it's got the higher degree. See what I mean? It doesn't matter. I don't care. Do not waste your brain power. Don't waste your RAM on this type of crap. Just show me the stuff that's important for this class, which is doing the factoring. Everyone... Picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So, would anybody want to do B for me? I'm changing color to green because I'm in a green mood. It is indeed two. Any letters? No, why? Because eight is a constant. So two, and I get four plus five A plus three A squared. Gouda? Great. We change the order, but I don't care. C is difficult. C is very tricky. I'm giving you a warning that C is going to trick some of you.
What do you want to take out of that? You want to take out 5C and D. Everybody cool? Everyone's okay with that, right? Now this is something that's a little bit weird because we call this kind of factoring what? What are we calling all this factoring that we're doing? GCF, right? Greatest common factor, yeah? But when I do this division, I'm going to put 5CD out here, yes? And in there is going to be negative 4C3, right? Negative 6C squared D, yeah? Right? Mm -hmm. And negative 5. Does everyone agree? Yeah? Okay. Is there another factor that we could remove from all of this? This is what makes this question tricky. Remember, if it's common, it's in all of them. A negative, which is weird because a negative isn't greatest, is it? Right? The GCF here is 5, isn't it? Because 5 times negative 4 gets me negative 20, 5 times negative 6 gets me 30, and 5 times negative 5 gets me that, yeah? So 5 is the greatest common factor, right? But we could also take a negative out of there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which then makes this no longer the greatest common factor. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Everybody with me? Now, the question always becomes, well, what do you want us to do, Mr. Myers? And my answer is always get as much stuff out as you can. Okay? So in the rare occurrence that something like this happens, I like you to get that negative out of there. Picking up what I'm putting down? So what would that then become? This would be negative, and what would happen to all of these negatives? They'd become positive, right? So I'd have 4 at c squared plus and plus. Okay? Everybody cool? Now, it's, it's, a, it's weird, right? Because you want to call it the GCF. But really, that isn't the GCF. That's the LCF, the lowest common factor, right? Or the least common factor. And what about this guy? Can you do anything with him? One. But that's going to make it the same, right? So this guy doesn't factor. Now, I'm going to put some of them in your assignments and some of them in your tests. And some of you are going to start dividing by stuff and making a big giant mess. It's just as important to know when you're done. Right? If you run a whole marathon, when you cross over the finish line, do you keep running? No. It's because you're crazy in the head. Anybody that runs 26.2 miles without being chased by a bear is crazy in the head quite frankly. Like, no offense if any of you are marathon runners, but unless you're being chased by a bear, really. I, I don't get it. But a lot of people don't get why grown men play rugby either. So I don't know. Oh my God, I forgot about this. Once a week, I'll sometimes go on Facebook because I have nothing better to do. Literally nothing better to do. It's when I'm sitting on the couch and... My daughter is watching The Voice, which is a waste of time. And I've already cooked dinner, folded all the laundry, cleaned up the dinner dishes. Everything in my life is done. I've done all my marking. Like, everything is done. I'm like, oh, crap. I have nothing to do. I play Scrabble online with a few of my buddies. It's all their turn. I play Yahtzee online with strangers. It's all their turn. Like, I have nothing to do. It's crap. I guess I have to go on Facebook because it's only 8 o'clock and I can't go to bed. 
So I went on Facebook last night and I found, do you know who John Cleese is? He's a famous British comedian. He was in Monty Python. A letter to Americans about how, because they're too so stupid, they've elected Donald Trump, that they're not, they, they have proven that they should not be allowed to govern themselves. So he says, the British are taking back your independence. <laughs> and there was all this line, a list of things that they have to do now. And one of them was, you have to stop playing football. Because American football is stupid. It's not even a real game. Nobody else in the world plays it. You should play real football, but start by playing only with girls. Which is kind of sad to the girls. It's mean, but it gets funnier. The bravest amongst you might possibly be allowed to play rugby, which is similar to American football, except you don't take a rest every two seconds or cover your bodies in Kevlar-like armor like a bunch of Nancys. That was his actual words. And I was reading it. That's pretty funny. And the last thing he says, and of course, we will be sending... British tax collectors to collect all the taxes you owe us backdated to 1776. It's very funny. If you find yourself with some free time, look up John Cleese, Cleese's letter to the, uh, to the American public because there's a lot of funny jokes in it. Anyways, do page 110, do page 111, and then that'll be the end of the day. <laughs>